Hi there, this is Morgan with Morgan Burke's Photography and Product Shop. And today I'm gonna to show you how to make a selection around a subject and pay special attention to the hair. Um, so you can use this tutorial to um, blur a background of a photo. Um, you can also use it to transfer your subject from one background to another. Um, so I'm gonna show you both instances in this tutorial. Um, so we'll just go ahead and jump right in. The first thing that we're gonna do is just duplicate our background layer so that whatever work we do, we've got our original saved on another layer. Um, okay, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna grab our quick selection tool. Um, it is sometimes located behind the magic wand tool, depending on which you use last. Um, you can right click on the tool to choose from the menu which one you want. So here I'm just gonna choose the quick selection tool. Actually, I'm gonna zoom in first then choose the quick selection tool. And I'm gonna make it a little larger here just by hitting the right bracket key on my keyboard. And then I'm just gonna sweep this over my subject to make my selection. Um, so here, I just wanna make sure that I get the majority of the hair. I don't need to get the extra strands or any of that, but I wanna get um, a, a good portion of the hair. And then the body here, I'm gonna zoom out, or scroll down, sorry. Um, and then I'm gonna hold down shift just to add to the selection and I wanna make sure to grab her hand too. Um, okay, so at first your selection is gonna be a little bit rough, but what we're gonna do is we are going to turn this selection into a layer mask so that we can tweak it. Um, so to do that, what we're gonna do is just, with your selection accomplished, hit the layer mask button at the bottom of your layers panel. And this will add that layer mask that keeps your selection intact. So if you turned off your background layer, you can actually see what your selection looks like. Um, so, with the background layer turned off so that we can see our adjustments a little better here, I'm going to zoom in so we can pay attention to her hair. Um, and then with the layer mask selected, so um, it's got the white little corners highlighted here, we are going to choose the Select and Mask button inside of the Properties panel here for this layer mask. So just click Select and Mask and it will pull up these adjustments. So what I'm gonna do is use this tool over here. It is called the Refine Edge Brush Tool. Um, so it's automatically selected for me when I enter this panel, but if it's not, just click that one. And you can make your brush as large as you'd like here. Um, and then just sweep over, oops, sorry. Sweep over the hair. And as you do, you'll notice that it adjusts the edges. And so it begins to remove some of that dark background and then brings those strands that we originally left out, it'll bring those back for you. And you can make your brush a little larger. Um, my computer might be going a little bit slow since I'm recording a tutorial at the same time I do this. Um, but once it's done loading, I'm gonna make my brush a little larger. Um, and you can see those hairs pop up here as it takes its time. Okay, make my brush larger here and then just continue sweeping over these other strands. And I love this because it, it is actually like a really smart tool. It starts to take out those dark spots between the strands of hair and then keeps those individual strands. Okay, so I'm gonna let go here so that I can zoom or scroll down again. And then I'm just gonna continue around here. And here it looks like it's got a little bit of that dark background going on. Um, so I'm just gonna paint over it and see if that helps at all. Oops, starting to remove too much there. You can Alt Control Z to remove that last one. And then we can just hit okay to use our layer mask to tweak the rest. Um, so if you wanted to, you can turn your background layer on if that helps you. Um, if not, you can just leave it off so you can see what is included in your selection and what isn't. I'm actually gonna go back into Select and Mask really quick and see if that helps me um, tweak that little edge. Sometimes when you exit and then re-enter the mask, it does different things. Okay, so. Just waiting on it to load again. Okay, so I will just go ahead and leave it here. So I'm gonna hit okay. 
And then I'm going to, on my layer mask, I'm going to use a brush tool to um, manually adjust this selection here. Uh, so to do that, I'm just gonna grab my brush tool and then on a layer mask, you can paint with either white or black to refine the mask. So anywhere that's black is not going to be included on our selection. And then anything that's white, and I'm actually gonna alt click this layer mask so you can see it. Anything that's white will be in our selection. Um, so you can just click on the thumbnail uh, photo here to um, get rid of that mask view. Okay, and I'm gonna click the layer mask before I begin painting here, just to make sure that it applies in the right spot. And then you can grab a white brush and then paint um, at whatever opacity you like. I'm gonna do 50% here and just paint that hair back in where it's showing up that it's transparent here. You could also flip your color to black to remove any spots that you don't. So if you wanted to fade this black color here between the strands of hair, you can do that. Um, you can go as far with this as you'd like. Here there's a little um, golden spot that was in the original photo that I'm just gonna remove here. And put my opacity at two using the two on my keyboard. I mean, sorry, put the opacity at 20 using the two key on my keyboard. Uh, just fade that a little bit. Anyway, so I'm gonna go ahead and, oops, missed a spot. Okay, so I'm just gonna paint with black to remove that. Okay. And now what we can do is we can turn our background layer back on. Um, so you won't be able to really see your selection with it on, but what I'm gonna do here is just duplicate the background layer so that I can show you how you could blur your background if you wanted to. Uh, so I'm gonna turn off our selection layer here click on our duplicated background copy, and then just grab the lasso tool to quickly make a selection around your subject. It does not need to be perfect at all. We're just gonna remove our subject from the photo before we blur. Um, that way the colors from your subject's dress or her hair are not included in the blur. They're not blurred along with the background. Um, if you've ever tried to blur a background and you notice this funny edges around your subject, it's usually because um, it's blurring the colors from your subject into the background. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and go to edit, fill, make sure that it says content aware, and then hit okay. And this will automatically remove your subject for you and try to fill it with what it thinks um, should go there. Okay, so once that's done, I'm gonna hit control D or command D if you're on a Mac to deselect that um, selection there. And once this is done, you can now blur this duplicated background layer. So to do that, I'm gonna to go to Filter, Blur Gallery, and choose Field Blur. Um, this one's my favorite. If you don't have Field Blur, or if you prefer a different blur, you're more than welcome to use a different one. Um, and then here, you can just drag the slider over here on the right, or you can spin this wheel to uh, create different blur effects. You can blur this as much as you like. Um, I'm gonna go a little heavy on this just so you can see the difference, and then hit OK. Okay, now once your blur appears, you can go ahead and turn your subject layer back on. And then you can see the difference here. If you turn your blurred layer on and off, you can see your changes. And you can also see if any of the hairs on your subject are, have disappeared. If they have, go ahead and select that layer mask again and you can enter the select and mask option as many times as you'd like to tweak this mask. Um, so what you can do here is just zoom in and this way you can see the hairs on your new background or your adjusted background. Um, and then you can just sweep this tool over these hairs again to make the tool try one more time to make the changes. Okay, and you'll see a few new hairs pop up here. Again, it's going a little bit slow because I'm recording at the same time, but once it's finished, then I'll scroll down and, and finish on the rest of the hair. And as you go over it, you'll see new strands appear and you'll see it make those changes for you. OK, 
Okay, in this select and mask area, you can also, if you notice that the edges of your subject are a little jagged, um, you can use the smooth slider over here to make those a little smoother. Um, you can also play with these other sliders in here to tweak. It depends on your photo and um, the edges of your subject and things like that. But um, there's different options in here you can experiment with. Um, I just need to be careful. Sometimes when you use the smooth tool, it smooths the hair too, which can make it look a little funny. Um, so just something to keep in mind. And once you like your selection or the changes that you've made, you can go ahead and hit OK to approve them. And then you can zoom out again and then just do the same thing. Turn that eye, um, the visibility icon on and off on that blurred layer to see your changes. And then again, when you've zoomed out, so you can see your blur. Um, so if you wanted to move your subject to a new photo, what you could do is just make sure that your um, selection layer is chosen. Grab your move tool and then you'll see that you can start to move your subject around here. And so then you can just drag and drop your subject onto another photo. In this case, I've chosen one that has similar coloring. It's kind of dark, um, it's got some of those green colors, just to make it a, more of a smooth transition between the two backgrounds. If you choose a background for your subject that's completely different than the one you started with, it may require a little bit of extra work to make it look believable. Um, and that could be changing up the lighting or the coloring or things like that. Um, but it's definitely doable. It would just take a little extra work. Um, okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go to Edit, Free Transform, so that I can resize my subject and make her fit on this background just a little bit better. Uh, so before I do that, what I wanna do is choose this little button up here. What this does is it makes sure that no matter how you stretch, your subject doesn't get squished or it doesn't start. she doesn't start to look distorted. Um, so if I were to uncheck that and drag this box, she could, you know, become distorted depending on how you move this. So just by checking that box, it keeps your original dimensions and makes sure that she looks her best. Okay, so once I'm doing this, I'm just gonna place the bottom of my subject against the bottom of the photo, and then you can Alt or Option click and scroll with your mouse if you need to um, be able to grab from this top up here. And that way she's stuck against the bottom of the photo and then you can just resize from the top to, and to your liking. So I think about there looks pretty good. I'm gonna hit the check mark and then just zoom in here to make sure that the edges and that her hair looks good against this background. If it doesn't, or if you feel like it needs a little more work, you can come in here, zoom in wherever you'd like, and then again, just select that mask, hit select and mask, and then you can drag that same brush over these hairs um, to allow it to readjust. And so as you do that, it'll reassess the photo and the new background and pull some of those strands back out or fade the background between the hairs. And so again, you can do this as many times as you need to to get it to look just right. Um, and it's pretty intuitive as to what it grabs. But again, if it goes too far or you don't like what it does, you can tweak it um, by painting onto the layer mask as well. So I'm just gonna fade these little strands here just a little bit and then that one. And then wait for it to load again, it's taking a little bit. So once that's done, I'm just gonna hit OK, and then we can zoom out and check our changes. And just double check around all the edges of our photo and make sure it looks okay. And again, you can, in Select and Mask, you can use the smooth layer if you need to adjust the edges there. Um, and you can go into the layer mask and then paint with a black brush if you need to remove anything, like that dot there in her hair. Um, so. That's just about it. Um, if you have any questions, you can shoot me an email at morgan at morganburks.com or you can find me on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash morganburksphotography. Um, thank you so much for watching. And if this is your first tutorial of mine that you're seeing, you can find more at morganburks.com. Thanks again. Have a great day.